So you finally bagged yourself the big buck, got it home, processed some meat out. We're here to help you figure out what to do with the rest of it. Thanks for joining us. So what is a European mount? A European mount is just the antlers still attached to the skull of the deer. So what we're going to be doing is removing the skin and tissue from the skull, uh, getting all the brain and everything out, and then boiling the rest to try and loosen everything up. Once we have it down as much as we can, we'll try and use some chemicals to, uh, to treat it to get the most out of it. Some people use bleach or peroxide, uh, but those make your bones brittler. I've heard a lot of professionals will just use uh, spray paint or a clear coat, but for this video, we're just going to go through the process of stripping it and getting it to the point of how you treat it, and then we'll go through some treatment options. Some other things you might need, a couple garbage bags, a lot of nitrile gloves, your preferred fine-tooled skinning knife. You want something with a real sharp point. A lot of guys will use a scalpel for this. I've got a carving blade from Earl's Forge, Triple D Forge, a couple pairs of pliers, one being needle-nosed, some chunks of wire that you can use to bend around in crevices, and some clamps or some way to keep the antlers out of the water while you're boiling it. You really want to start this process by starting your water boiling because it takes a while for that much water to get going. And then you're going to want a chair and somewhere you can sit down with your head and a garbage bag and your knife and you're just gonna get to work skinning. So you really just wanna put your gloves on, get yourself a garbage bag opened up and ready to go. Grab your skinning knife. I like to let it sit a little while. I don't like to do a fresh head because I have fresh eyeballs are a lot harder to deal with. But I always start from up here in the antler. Around the antlers is and around the jaw are the hardest part. The antler, it's mostly because you're really worried about messing it up, you know? You don't want to get into your antler. And I'm by no means an expert. I've only done this a couple other times, but I'm glad I did. Like I said, if you do it on small deer that you get, you're ready, you know, you feel more prepared do it when you get something you really really want to commemorate I mean at a certain point things get really graphic right uh, I'm not sure covering things up with a trash bag really hides that fact in any way there's some guys who will just put them out in a you know out in a pile outside and just wait and let time do its thing that's free I've been putting it off for a while because you know one not very fun of the parts of the process this is probably the grossest and you don't really get any food out of it or anything it's just you know something cool to have and two but busy and this is a lot of time and work okay so that's my faceless deer skull uh, you know essentially that's a European mount but we still got to clean it up, boil some of the brains and eyes out of it, get it all, you know, taken care of, get those last tufts of hair off. Uh, so we have to go over to the boiling pot. You want the skull in it, but not the antlers. And if your antlers are big enough, like that, you don't really, it doesn't take a whole lot. So all I'm going to do for this one, is I'm going to add a couple clips 
just to make sure you know it stays up above that line oh, there we go got a lot of steam going now uh, we're gonna let it simmer there for probably about 15 20 minutes and then we'll pull it out and see what's softened up one of the hardest parts about this is that the whole time you're doing all that it smells like delicious venison soup it just makes you so hungry every once in a while you just want to feel your antler check the heat because there's going to be heat coming up around the sides you want to want to feel around make sure that you can handle it if it's too hot for you to grab the antler you might want to consider repositioning it you don't want to scorch your antler it's been about a half hour to rolling boil so we're going to pull it out and take a look real quick yeah so you can tell when you're going to be good because the meat will be cooked that's what makes it easier to get off, fall off the bone cooking. So we're gonna go let it cool off for a minute and try and get the tongue out, get some more off of this, and then we're gonna put it back in the pot and boil it a little bit more. So you can see, well I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave the clamps on because they're in a really good spot and I don't wanna lose that. But you can see, you know, all the connective tissue and the muscle it's cooked now, which means, you know, in theory it'll come off a lot easier. The back of this will open up because there's still a neck piece here, but we'll get into the back of the skull and start working on brain, which is gross. But it looks like, for the most part, the eyeballs kind of cooked their way out. <sighs> Hooray. I'm going to get back into trimming it up. And that's your tongue and the muscle group from the lower jaw. You can eat the tongue if you want. There are a lot of people who do. I never have. And since it's not fresh, I won't now. But, you know, beginning to look more and more like a mount and less like a dead animal. Anyway, we're going to try and get this back vertebrae off. We'll pop it back in the pot. We're back all the way to the back of the skull. We got that last vertebrae out of there. This is the entrance to the brain cavity. And so, the last thing we're going to want to do before we start reboiling again is just give that a you know give it a good old good old how you do it uh, I let this one go for quite a while because I've done it to fresh ones before and it makes this part really 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 gross so this part should just be a little gross here it feels like Greek yogurt if you don't know how to take off gloves without, without touching the outside of gloves, you come back. You come back toward the wrist. And you scoop the outside like that and you pull it in on itself. And then say back here. That way you don't have to touch the outside of gloves. That's a, that's a pro tip for you. So now I've got the skull and the lower jaw dropped down in there. So we're going to bring it back to a boil for another hour or so. The longer you let it boil, it's like a roast. The longer you let it boil, the softer everything's going to be. So now you're just slowly working little pieces off, you know. Getting the rest as clean as you can get it. See this last little bit of fur? It's just coming right off. Just got to get in there and grab it good. Well, I just dropped it. I broke a little piece of the front section of the nose off. Still gonna, still gonna save it. See if I can glue it on. I think it'll still look good without it. It's the real problem with these is all these bones in the front here are real brittle. You've got to be real careful with them. And glue never hurt a mount any. So that's where we're at right now. Since I dropped it and damaged the nose a little bit, clearly I'm getting tired and careless. So I think for right now, we're gonna call that a night. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Or even if you didn't, you know, throw us a bone. Subscribe to the channel uh, and tune in next week as we finish off this European mount. Thanks for watching, guys.